Hi guys and welcome back to the channel, Machining with Joe. So long time viewers might be aware of this quick change tool post that I originally made for the Harrison M300 and it's been working really great. When it comes to changing out tools this thing is an absolute breeze and the tool library that I've been building up is growing significantly. But one thing which is really annoying is whenever you've got to do any boring procedures you've got to rotate the tool post 90 degrees to accommodate any boring bars and as basic as that sounds it does get very repetitive and actually really annoying if I've squared out the tool post so I'm going to be getting that addressed in today's video so to begin with just going to take this thing apart give it a good old look over as it's been over a year since this thing's been properly apart and disassembled so it's going to be interesting to see if I've got any rust in there With the quick change tool post now off of the lathe then, I just want to quickly break down all the components on this before I mock up a drawing of what we're going to be doing today. So the first component on this is this sort of lockdown nut here. So this basically clamps the whole tool post down to the compound of the lathe but still allows this portion here to rotate. So that's quite a simple piece. Now, looking at this piece in particular, this is what makes this thing work as well as it does. So, this portion here acts like a cam lobe that you see on a car. So, by having a slight offset in there, what it allows it to do is when this is rotated, essentially the locking pin down here, it pushes that out and as you go down, it retracts it. So, without this offset lobe feature then, this tool post just wouldn't work. So obviously we've just covered on the locking pin. That's quite a simple part to make, which is a good thing because we'll be making another one of those in this video. But essentially that's a piece of 18 mil round brass and it's designed out of brass just because that's a softer material than the steel. So hopefully this is gonna wear out before the tool post or tool holders. And then finally, oh, We've got the big old chunk of steel, which is the tool post itself. So essentially what we're going to be getting done today is where we've got this dovetail feature here and the hole, we need to get another one of those machined out of this side. So when this was designed, everything was designed centrally. So we've got enough material there that we can do this without having any major effects on the part. So just going to knock up a drawing qu real quick and then we're going to head over to the milling machine where we can start machining this. Having this drawing then to reference to during the machining procedure is going to be really handy when it comes to just getting measurements I need to dial into the DRO and adjust on the hand wheels. So just taking measurements off the original part I'm going to transfer that over to where it needs to be when we machine the next part. With that all done then, I can now put the tool post over onto the milling machine, get all that squared in and get that dialed in on the DRO so I've got a reference point on this face here. So the old famous Hamer gauge is coming out which makes procedures like this oh, it's so much easier. You don't have to worry about centralising it or accounting for the tool offset. This points out the centre mark. So switching over to an 18 mil end mill now. I'm going to start hogging out bits of metal and getting this down to where it needs to be. Not before zeroing this out on the workpiece. So to do this is a little method that I've seen people do on YouTube. I've just got a feeler gauge here with a 0.05 millimeter shim stock and just getting that so the end of the mill touches onto the piece. Looks like that's bitten in there now and with that said and come down on the quill and start hogging out material. So because I'm side milling this, I can only take out very light cuts at a time. So I'm doing about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 mil here. So it's going to take several passes before this is finally machined down to the distance it needs to be. With that one side done, 
Now I can switch to the other side and instead of using the Hamer gauge this time, just going to be using the feeler gauge method and making sure that the end mill comes in contact with that so I know roughly where we are in relation to its distance. So this time we're going to be going for some standard milling where we're coming down gradually with the quill and taking parts as we go. This way I can take out a lot more material and it's just an overall quicker process for me. So in total we're coming down 9mm and we're taking about 15mm off each side. With all that end mill work done now, now we can switch over to the 60 degree dovetail cutter. Now, it's quite primitive how I set this up, but essentially I touch off on the workpiece and then slowly move in towards the shoulder that we've machined until the tip of the tool makes contact. From there, I've got the measurements on the drawing of how far to go in. Using this dovetail, I'm always very cautious because it just seems quite cheap in Chinesium. So I never like to take really deep cuts on these things. They're about nine quid off eBay, so what do you expect? So for this side, just wanted to show you guys another method of how you can blue up the part with a Sharpie and then just move in until you can see a slight line that's been taken. Then you know that you're at the distance that you need to be for the work. And same procedure again, really just taking off really gradual passes as I go, moving in towards the workpiece and waiting for that dovetail to form nicely. So sod's law here. This was the last pass, and just look what happens. Not taking any real deep depths of cut, and then... Bang! The cheap Chinesium tool has broke. So it hasn't done that much damage, but this is the last one I've got. And it means, yeah, it means we're going to be doing a lot of hand filing with a 60 degree triangle file. So, let's get filing. And I'll tell you what, this filing in the evening just seemed to go on for hours and hours. It probably wasn't, it was probably more like sort of 10, 20 minutes, but in my head I felt like I'd been out in the workshop, you know, hours. So after what seemed hours and hours of hand filing, I've managed to get this to a point now where the quick change tool holder slides over the post really easy and doesn't seem to be barely any movement. So that tool that you saw broke in the milling machine has done, let's see it, has done a little bit of damage there, down the bottom there, down there, but it's not gonna affect the overall performance of this. And to be honest, given how much work I've put into this, I'm not gonna be making another one. So just gonna live with that. It's gonna be a nice little function of the tool post little stories to tell people. So next thing I need to do now is we need to drill a hole in here 20 mil diameter and that's going to be center of this workpiece. Once that's done and everything's deburred I can head over to the lathe. Oh actually I'm gonna have to do it on the mini lathe actually because I've just realized we've not got a tool post on here. So I'm gonna head over to the mini lathe make up a little piece of brass stock to go in here and then that should all be done. First thing then when drilling out this hole, just going to find the centre line of the tool post. So again, like always, going to be whipping out the Hamer gauge, zeroing out on each side and using the half function on the DRO to get the halfway mark. And then going to be doing the same on the other side of the tool post.
with the centre line now sorted, you can start drilling this out and removing material to get this to a 20mm diameter hole. So starting here with a 5mm stub drill, then stepping it straight up to a 10mm jobber drill bit. After the 10mm, I've just gone up in incremental sizes, not to put too much load on the milling machine, and also I really don't want this tool post to jump out of the vise. So I think I've gone up 10, 14 mil, 16, 18 and 20. So really gradual step ups, no real risk here, which is what we like. So once that hole was done, I thought, how can I make this thing even better? So why not head over to the surface grinder like I have done on a few builds now in the workshop. So having the surface grinder to hand is so good when it comes to things like this. Having that excellent finish on it means that it's not going to rust that quickly in the workshop and also it just looks really nice. So, you know, a bit of surface grinder fun, a bit of amazing finish. What's not to love? Now, over on the Warco mini lathe, going to be making this piston and yes I know that's not brass in the lathe it's aluminium and I couldn't to be honest find any brass suitable size I did have some larger brass in the workshop but there's no way I was going to be turning that down to 20 mil so switch to some aluminium stock which is going to work absolutely fine and turning this down just using the 3d printed quick change tool holder that I made in a previous video because works so good and the tool that I wanted to use was already in it. So just facing this off to get rid of any old holes that were drilled into this I can then start machining this down taking very light passes to get that really nice surface finish. And just using a CCGT tool here which is designed for aluminium gets me the best finish possible. So with that face down and turned down, it was a case of parting this off. So using the ruler method here to get this to be exactly zero with the end of the workpiece, I can start parting it off. And it didn't sound great. I've always hated parting on this lathe and I thought, you know what, I'm going to reassemble the tool post and just part it off on the Harrison M300. It's not worth the risk in my opinion. So. Harrison M300 made such light work of this, being aluminium and being the fact that it's a massive lathe, yeah, why, why wouldn't you do this? With all the machining now done, the last thing left to do is assemble this and give it a final test. So oiling everything as I go, we're going to get this thing together for the first time and see how it actually functions. So in goes the pistons and that's all finished. And once again can I just say how good the surface ground parts look. So something I've never done before but it's something I'm going to do I think on every part from now because it just looks amazing. Taking one of the turning tools then out of my storage location. This locates on there just as it always did and secures nicely. But now when I want to grab a boring bar, I can put this back into storage, grab myself my boring bar and locate it. Simple as that. No rotating the tool post, nothing. So that's a win. There we have it then guys. The quick change tool post is all now modified and I'm really happy that I've had no major issues in this 
which has resulted in this thing being scrapped. So that's a win-win. It's going to be great being able to turn down stock and also now bore out holes without having to change things about. So yeah, everyone's a winner. So that about sums up this video today. Um, I'm going to be doing some more in-depth videos coming up soon. Just recently with life and everything getting in the way. It's been really struggle getting here in the workshop. But now I've got the official Machining with Joe t-shirt. It's going to mean getting out in the workshop and doing some really fine machining. It's going to be essential. Because like the t-shirt says, why settle for millimetres when you can machine micrometres? So it's about time I put that to the test and see how detailed machining I can do here in the workshop. So thanks again for watching guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.